Will you look at that? I got a box from Mojo Tone. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Well, this is somewhat a reenactment because I've already opened it. Looky, 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 little eight inch speaker. Alright, I'm going to shut the hell up. I'll just cut to the chase. I bought myself a little Mojo Tone kit for the 5F1 Fender Tweed Champ. All sorts of nice things like a chassis, power cord, which I'm not going to use because I'm not in America, but that's all good. Some wire, some capacitors, fiber board, transformer. Oh, yes, there it is. Transformer. Components. Lots and lots and lots of components in a lovely little box that I can reuse. Look at that. The only thing I'm missing is the cabinet. Uh, that's not Mojo Tone's fault. There was unfortunately an error. Yeah, USPS, United States Postal Service, and um, both of these packages ended up going up to Canada as opposed to Australia, and then they got turned back. And one of them got relabeled for Australia, and I got it. The cabinet went back to Mojo Tone, but they're sending it to me because they're lovely people. They're extremely awesome to deal with. So, let's have a look at the circuit, shall we? Come on, focus on there. As you can see, it's a relatively simple thing. you got, you know, two resistors for the input, a low and a high gain. Going into a triode, which gives it some gain. Through a capacitor to a potentiometer, which acts as a volume control. Into another triode to give it some more gain. Then feeding a 6V6 beam tetrode for the output. It's got a wee bit of negative feedback, 22k. In the grand scheme of things, it's not that, that much. Meant to spit out about 5 watts. Now, one thing you'll notice, on the cathode of the first stage, there's a 1500k resistor, sorry, 1500 ohm resistor. Um, there's been a bit of discussion on the internet um, regarding putting a Bypass capacitor, 25 mic, just like in the output, which gives it some more gain. They say, did it originally come with it or not? Well, let's have a look over here. As you can see, that big orange capacitor on the right-hand side. That's the cathode bypass cap, so some of these tweed champs have them. This one certainly did. As did this one. So did this one. This one didn't. This one did. So these are all authentic gut shots which I got off the internet. And a lot of them that I found had that bypass capacitor. Apparently it's meant to sound better. I'm going to try it with both and see which one I prefer. I'm putting my money with the bypass capacitor because, well, basically I like the sound of a cranked up amplifier, especially these little Fender Tweed jobbies. And I want a bit more gain, obviously. Now one thing I may use a little turret board so I may or may not use that we'll soon find out let's see how we go so here we have two boards the board on the bottom is an eyelet board that is used in the fender originally this is a stock one that comes with um, the mojo tone kit absolutely nothing wrong with it it's very good quality really nice eyelets pretty strong it's got a little insulating thing on the bottom like I said, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a good quality board. But, I'm a high watt nut. I just have, I'm a sucker for turrets. Why, don't ask me. I just like them. I like them a lot. So instead, I'm using this turret board. Which I got off of eBay for, I think, 20 bucks. Nice, thick board material. Nice, shiny McShine turrets. And I'm going to secure that onto the chassis two screws that are going through the bottom. As I said, absolutely nothing wrong with this. I am just pedantic and strange. So I'm going to go for the turret. Another small thing I'm going to change. In the kits for the speaker socket, it originally used an RCA, as in the old fenders. But I want to have the option to hook it up to an external speaker cabinet, sort of like a, well, like my quad box. So I've got a nice spare Switchcraft quarter inch socket which fits perfectly through the already drilled hole so that's less for me to do. 
anyway, best to get on with it and um, get started on this thing. Let's see where we end up in the next scene, hey? To make life easy, I've drew up a little template of the bottom of the board where I've marked out the holes so I can punch them and then drill them. Tip of the day, yay. Turret board mounted, look at that. Up, up. Two little screws there. It's not going anywhere, just to prove it to you. So now I'm going to take it out, uh, pardon me while I burp, and mount some components. Yes. So, um, after a while, here I am. Turret board is all soldered up, wired up. Taking a bit of time, I had a friend drop over, I had another phone call, so slowly but surely, here we are. There's the back of it wired up. Now I'm gonna drop it in the chassis. So here we are. I decided to call it a night. I've um, popped in the tube sockets, just see there. Um, I'd put a quarter inch jack instead of the um, RCA for the speaker. And I um, put all the little flying leads on the back of the turret board. Now my eyesight's starting to give way, it's starting to become dark, so I'm going to leave the rest till tomorrow. Yes. Alright, we're up to day two of the build. As you can see, um, I've got it on the um, turret board. One thing I'm looking at which I regret doing is this over here. Don't know what the hell I was thinking. It's bloody ugly. I'll just blame it on the fact that I was a bit hungover yesterday. Rather than blame it on stupidity. But I'm going to get rid of that. And use this nice thick bit of wire on the underside. So that would be the smart thing to do. That would be the neat thing to do. And the last thing I want to do is to open up this amplifier and see that bloody hack job over there you know it's all about aesthetics as well you know it's not just the sound so let's undo that and keep on going oh that's better isn't it look at that look how neat that looks lovely 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 there we go see 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 done the job nicely if i actually focus come on focus there we go look at that Yummo, no one's going to see that are they? Well, after I mount it in the chassis. Do you believe? Actually no, that isn't the next step. Heater wiring, there's an idea, let's get on to that. A wee update before I take a little break for a coffee. As you can see, the board is now in. Looking alright. I uh, failed to mention before, the actual legs of the resistor were too short. For the um, for the cathode resistor on the very first stage, so I decided to put in the um, cathode bypass capacitor anyway. Figured I'll take the word of the forums. Maybe it's just a bit of blind faith. Who cares? I need to wrap the resistor around the capacitor to actually reach the turrets. But I can see this is going to be a good thing anyway. Why the input sockets? Um, the volume potentiometer. I've yet to wire the mains. I put in a slightly different um, lamp holder than the one that actually came with it because the unfortunate thing was the one that came with it was a bit big and started hitting the capacitor because as I said I put in the turret which is raised. These are the risks that one takes when doing something slightly different. Them's the brakes. A little more work but so be it. I have wired in the preamp valve and the output valve sockets. Um, due to do the rectifier socket, I've already done a bit of it, but my eyes are starting to give way, and I think I need to take a break, clear my head a bit. I've also put a little bit of tag strip, came with it. That's um, going to be the main ground point. I've already done a few little grounds here and there. As you can see, I uh, use little metal film resistors for the 100 ohm jobbies that go to ground from the filament taps. But, uh, blah blah blah. There you go. See, see, see. Don't have much to go. Soon I'm going to do the smoke test. Let's see how we go there. 
So then a little bit of a overhead shot just to see how it's all going. There you go. All right, I'm going to have a cup up back soon. So here we are. Wiring is complete. My eyes have practically hit rock bottom. Uh, it's starting to whoops, see double a bit, and my hands are a bit clumsy. But there we are. No valves in it yet, which is just as well because if I had have dropped it with the valves in like I did, it would have been history. Total and absolute history. But um, yeah, there we go. There's the front panel. There's the rear. There's the front. All shiny. The um, volume slash power switch. The two inputs. The valve sockets for the 12AX7, the 6V6, and the 5Y3. Got the speaker there. The Mojo tone. Now I'm going to power this up and hope to hell that it doesn't blow up. Let's see what happens, shall we? Yes. So here it is. It um, seems to be working fine. I've um, buzzed it out um, with the multimeter and things are within their relatively expected voltages. As you can see, the little dual lamp is on. It's nice and warm. Hooked it up to the speaker. It's not in the cabinet, so it'll sound a bit tinny. Got my obligatory red les Paul. So um, let's have a listen, shall we? So yeah, we got sound. So what I'm going to do is just turn it off, give it time to cool off a wee bit, and um, put in some. New old stock valves, hook it up to my quad box and set on 4 ohms and see how it sounds through a proper cabinet. As I said, I'm still waiting for the um, actual tweed cabinet to come from Mojo Tone, but that's no big deal. The good news is that, is that we're here now and this is working, so let's give it a proper run. So here it is, warming up. Hooked up to my quad box with 4 eminent Tonka lights. So yeah, 5 watt amp going into a, what is it? Let's see, each speaker 125 watts, 500 watt quad box, 5 watt amp, 500 watt quad box. Anyway, the important thing is the valves that I've got in it. You've got a little Sylvania 12AX7 taken from the Helicrafters transmitter. I've just got a Russian job in the transmitter because it's only voice and, you know, I figured save the nice good old fashioned American valve for an amplifier. I have an RCA 6V6 which came out of a radio that should have taken a 6F6 so I put the 6F6 in the radio, pulled out the 6V6 for a special occasion i.e. chucking it into this champ that I built a GE 5Y3 rectifier so yeah, all American valves going into a champ so I'm just going to pop this chubby down there can we see it? is it focusing? yes it's focused I've got the obligatory sparkle red Les Paul. I'm just gonna stick the strap on. Wow. Now, um, as I'm getting this ready, one thing I will notice, um, in my infinite absent-mindedness, I forgot to put a bleed resistor in the power supply. So um, I'm gonna jury rig that up later, but that's not gonna change the sound at all. So, um, should be easy to put in right now. I may as well demonstrate what this amp sounds like. So I'm at about five and a half, and it's got a bit of dirt to it. It does clean up. I didn't build this for it to be clean, mind you. I could have gotten rid of that, um, cathode bypass capacitor in the first stage and that would have cleaned it up nicely but you don't use a small amp to get a clean sound at least I don't you know if that's what you want then thumbs up but who am I to sort of say that you're wrong but I like it Grunt. so we're at seven now um, 
balls of money. distortion, I don't know, quote me if I'm wrong, but eh, you know, I'll just turn it down. Next installment in this would be when I receive the um, cabinet and I'll lacquer it with some nitro and then put the speaker in. Right now I've got, I've got I'm gonna play this guitar and amp. Just a bit of a volume demonstration while I'm here. It's uh, there for the bridge pickup on the um, Les Paul P90. Shit, done it. 